Hello guys, today I want to go over file handling in Python. File handling is a very important part of any web application. Actually, it's a very important part of any application in general. It's basically how you would handle all the files that you create in Python, where they're placed, how to open them, how to close them, or when or where to close them and open them, and you know, if you want to edit them while, run while in runtime. Python has several functions for creating, reading, updating, and deleting files. The key function for working with files is the open function. The open function, I think I went over this in the try and error handling video, but it didn't work, so I'll try to see if I can fix that here. The open function takes two parameters, file name and mode. There are four different methods or modes for opening a file. If you put in the R argument, it will read the file. It opens it for reading, but does not allow to edit it and it will raise an error if the file does not exist. We can use the A argument to append it but again raises an error if it doesn't exist. We can use W to write it, creates an error if it doesn't exist and then X to create one and will return an error if the file exists. In addition we can specify if the file should be handled as a binary or a text file Use the T argument for text and B argument for binary. And there's important it's important to take note of syntax. To open a file for reading it, is it it is enough to specify the name of the file. So for something like that, we would create a variable f. It would, al it would always have to be f. Well, not always, but in most cases it will be. Assign it to the open function, and then we can open the name of our file. The code above is the same as f open the name of the file but with rt so it can read it in a text document because the r argument is for read and then the t is for text so you're reading the text make sure the file exists otherwise you will get an error i'm quite not i'm not quite sure why it gave me an error in the last video even though i did create the file but i'll try creating it again Anyway, assume we have the following file located in the same folder as Py- Oh, it has to be the same folder as Python. Uh, hang on guys, I'm gonna be- I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna create the file in the folder where Python saved. Uh, I'll be right back. Same way I did in the last video, and then I ran the code, and it worked. Which is surprising. Oh, I think I know what went wrong. When I created the file last time, it was trying to read it, I think. It was trying to read it and then there was nothing in it, so no way, that doesn't make sense. It's just output nothing instead. I don't know guys. I don't know, Python is weird sometimes. Anyways, so yeah. We can read only parts of a file. By default, the read method will return the whole text, but we can also specify to return a certain number of characters instead. So, if I were to put in 5 here, instead of reading the entire text file, it will only read the first 5 letters. So let me uh, clear this out, let me collapse this. And now it only prints out hello, since that was the first 5 letters. And if I were to add, change this to 15, it will say hello welcome, but stop around there. And yes, we can put in a variable that is an integer instead of just an integer itself. So if this was part of a larger Python file, I mean a larger Python code, we could add complexity to it and automation as well. Also, we can use the read function to read lines. So instead of using the read function, let's just add in read line. And read line goes to the first one, but then we call it again. Okay, it will go through the first line every time. But if we were to copy this function again, it will read the first two lines. 
so it remembers it, but if I run the code again, it won't remember the output from the first time I ran it. And we can use the for loop to read every line. In our script, for x and f, it will read it. So I'm not quite sure why it doesn't read it, go through it character by character, because it doesn't say a read line anywhere. Basically guys, just if I don't go through anything in this video, I would say go to python.org and then read up on it. That has a much better documentation than my videos. And I mean, I will cover it if there's a demand for it, but my videos have been getting so few views, I think I'll just move on to projects instead. I may make another tutorial series on Python, but I think I'll do that like years in the future. You know, when it, when there when there's certain spacing between this file, I mean, between this series and the next one. Anyways, we can also close the file after reading it. Basically when Python, we are using the open function to open a file. So if we were to close the file out, actually it doesn't work here because it's a text editor, but I mean, as far as the computer's hardware is concerned, the file is open, so it is a little bit more vulnerable. So it's always a good practice to close your files when you're done reading them or modifying them. So yeah, close files. You can use the close function. So it will read line and then close it. And just because I'm curious, let me use the read lines function that I saw in the function list. A and that goes through the entire... And that goes through the entire script. Which is interesting. But it goes through it in what I think is a list. Pretty sure it's a list or a set. I think it's a list uses the square brackets. Anyways, you should always close your files in some cases due to buffering. Changes made to a file will not show until you close the file. So if you're making any amendments or rewriting some code, make sure you close it first. I mean, close it when you're done. Now here's how we use the write function to write to an existing file. We must add a parameter to the open function. So instead of R, we should add W. And we can use the a function to append it, so we can add anything to the end of the file without modifying what's already in there, or we can use w to rewrite the whole thing. So to do this, let's create <coughs> demo file two dot text. And it should be empty. So let's modify it. <coughs> Using code. Sorry guys, I had some tea. My uh, throat is a little sour. A little itchy right now. Ah. Ah. I was drinking some water. <coughs> okay. So now we're using the open function and we're opening our new text file and we're using the amend key keyword. And now we're going to write to the end of it. Now the file has more content. So now when we go here, there's content. And we can also open and read it after appending it. file has more content and it does it twice because we ran the code again so yeah we can use this to uh, modify text file not just text files any files we can modify binary files um, we can modify all sorts of files even code yes we can even write code using code it is possible or modify code 
Okay, now to override the content. Um, my notes want me to make another one, but I'm another text file. I'm not gonna do that. Let's just keep this simple. Very simple. Oh, that's not what I wanted to. Uh... All right. Uh, let me just change this to two. Okay, opens the demo file again. This time we're using the W to overwrite it. Then we are writing, whoops, I have deleted the content. And then closes it. Now here's what's currently in here. Currently the file says now the file has more content. But when I run this, that statement should be replaced with whoops, I have deleted the content. And let me just add in an H here so we don't have any uh, grammar Nazis in the comments. Well. There's nobody in the comments, well, except for one or two people, so it doesn't matter. Anyways, now when we output it, it says, whoops, I've deleted content. And when we go here, yep, it's changed the content. Deleted the old one, added in new ones. So yeah, the W method, which is over here, will overwrite the entire file, so be careful when using it. We can create a new one using the X keyword x argument and we'll create a new file so let's create a new file so currently we only have demo file and demo file 2 but I want this line of code to create my file dot text when I run this there we go we now have my file it's an empty file, but we did create it. And if we were to run this line to open it again, as long as it doesn't return any errors, then you know the file has been created. Now to delete a file, we need to access the OS. So let's try removing demo file for that we need to import the OS which is our operating system this might be a little different for Linux because I have not tested it for, tested this for Linux it might not be basically you guys can test test this out on your own or if you want me to do it I can make a video on it just let me know or I'll probably go over this in the future when doing this as part of my projects anyways import the OS and then os.remove the file this file should be deleted and it was it was deleted also let's just say thank god I don't have another important file called demo file and it was only that one because if you type in the name of something of a file that's important to your operating systems functions like you know system32 yeah, you could accidentally delete that using Python, which is a good way to crash your computer. Anyways, to check if a file exists before deleting it, here's the code for that. So as before, it will import the operating system if os.path.exists if the file with that name exists it will remove it. If not, it will say the file does not exist. So to test it out, let's run this. It says the file does not exist. So now let me change this to demo file 2 and demo file 2. So now I want this one deleted. So let's clear this and run it. And now it was deleted. So that's a good way to check whether your file that you want deleted exists before you can delete it. Now, to delete an entire folder, we can also delete folders, by the way, as well as create folders and modify folders, just like we can do with files. But I'm only going to go with this one delete function for the folder because I'm lazy and that's what the source I got it from, W3Schools, had in their notes. <sighs> anyway code for that is something like this except I'm gonna change this to 
non underscore package. This may give us an error if it doesn't know the exact path of this folder. I mean, what's even in this folder? Um, it's from when I was going over the game package and modules creation, so hopefully it doesn't give us an error. Or any, if it doesn't give us an error, hopefully it doesn't destroy something. This, ah. Oh my god, I don't know how to speak. Hopefully it doesn't delete a folder that's really important. Anyways. Okay, it gave us an error because it did not know the exact directory path. So basically copy the directory path and then paste it in here. Hang on and give us an error. It cannot use the D. Guys, I'm gonna research this really quickly and then I'll come back. Alright, peace out. Well, not peace out, just uh, be right back. Alright guys, I'm back. And as you can tell, I have deleted the test package. So the reason I was getting the problem before is because it was not an empty package. So, to delete a non-empty package, as in a package that has content, you have to import shuttle, which is from the Python standard library, and then use shuttle.remove tree, and then the name of your directory. So I'd use this to delete test package, and now let me show you how it works for non-package. So non-package has content, let me delete this, and it's gone. However, if I were to use the old method, this cannot delete an empty, a non-empty folder, it has to be empty. So to give you an example, I created an empty folder. It's a folder, guys. Anyways, empty folder. So let me delete this. Empty, run it, and it's gone. So basically, that's how you delete directories in Python. Anyways, in the next video, I will go over... What's it called? Oh yeah, Python inputs and the Python date and time functions. And after that, I should be done with the Python series, and I will probably get into... I know Doom Eternal is coming out this Friday, so I will post videos on that game. Just just to see like if I get more views, posting a little bit something other than code, because my code tutorials have been a bit dry. So, I'm going to see if that helps boost my popularity. If not, then... That is... Just because I'm posting gaming content doesn't mean I won't be doing code content. I will be doing code content, I just will be doing it a little less often compared to gaming. As in, I'll probably just leave it for the weekends. Anyways, I hope you guys have a good one. Peace out.